This is a Transportation TV News update. I'm Tony Dorsey reporting. On Wednesday, September 23rd, a bill to extend federal surface transportation programs for three months beyond the scheduled September 30th expiration won the support of the House of Representatives after a lengthy debate. In a statement delivered before the final vote, Representative James Oberstar, Democrat from Minnesota, chairman of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, said, quote, we must pass an extension to provide continuity of funding for infrastructure projects, cutting edge research, and highway safety programs across the country that are putting Americans to work, saving lives, and fostering economic prosperity for businesses and consumers. The House approved H.R. 3617 to extend the Safe, Accountable, Flexible, and Efficient Transportation Equity Act, a legacy for users, through December 31st by a vote of 335 to 85. It's now headed to the Senate where lawmakers are considering an 18-month extension. Extension effort applauded, but rescission issue raises serious concerns for state DOTs. Read the headline on a statement released by the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, AASHTO, prior to the House vote. The House bill, while critical, does not repeal the $8.7 billion Highway Contract Authority rescission that will take effect September 30th. AASHTO Executive Director John Horsley says in the statement that this rescission will amount to real dollar losses to programs and projects and will have a devastating effect on many state departments of transportation and reverse the positive economic gains brought about by the Recovery Act. For example, Horsley says Missouri will lose $202 million in contract authority and the cut will have a disproportionate impact on local bridges and metropolitan planning organizations. Colorado would lose $115 million in contract authority. Michigan's share of the rescission is $263 million, which amounts to approximately a quarter of what the state received for highway and bridge funding through the Recovery Act. States are just starting to pick up some momentum through economic recovery, Horsley added. Now is not the time to turn back the clock. In other news, a new study by the AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety found an alarming upward trend in the number of deadly hit-and-run accidents nationwide. According to the study, 1,500 hit-and-run cases were reported across the country in 2008. More than half, 58 percent, occurred during weekends, Friday through Sunday, and 47 percent happened after dark between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. While specific reasons for the upward trend weren't given, Lon Anderson, spokesperson for AAA Mid-Atlantic, said distracted drivers, bicyclists, and pedestrians all played a role. What we're seeing, uh, and we're getting this from police departments throughout the region, is a big spike in hit and runs. Uh, unfortunately, that's cars and trucks that are hitting pedestrians and bicyclists. You know, with their iPods, their, their cell phones, not paying attention. You know, it's, it's unconscionable that one human being could do something to another human being knowing that they have probably seriously or fatally injured them and leave them lying in the street. Ironically, just behind us during the interview, we witnessed a distracted pedestrian who, while looking at her cell phone, walked off the curb just missing oncoming traffic. Also in the news, online voting is underway in the 2009 America's Transportation Awards competition. Ten transportation projects are now competing for two awards, the America's Transportation Awards Grand Prize and the People's Choice Award, which will be decided by voters across the country. More than 7,000 online votes have already been cast since September 8th. The voting continues through October 23, 2009 at the competition's official website, www America's Transportation Award.org. That's the Transportation News Update. I'm Tony Dorsey reporting.